the new summers. You see how fast that summer left? That summer packed the suitcase and said, y'all can have it. <laughs> Did you see how quick it was? Listen, don't play with me. I know you saw it. Did you, you still try to wear some of stuff? Come on, don't play with me. <laughs> now you got to rub that leg down. You got the heat pad on it. Don't play with me. Good to be with you wherever you might be watching me today. And you know that subscribe button gonna come across here in just a moment. And we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel. Make sure you're watching us. We have a little snippet on Instagram. Make sure you're watching us um, on WJYS. Watch all, subscribe to all our stuff, right? Yeah. Just like all our stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can see us, and you know, on Facebook and also on YouTube, you can just watch the sermons over and over again. And we are a financially sponsored ministry, and we need your help. Why don't you help us today? And so many of the churches have failed. So many people have stopped going to church because the ministries have failed God. But you know, in all of that, you still owe the Lord that temper of sin. If you're not being blessed, then you need to discover why. He gave you the strength to get the wealth that you have. And now he wants that money sold back into the church. We are such a small ministry. Yes, God. But the Lord has blessed us because of our faithfulness. We're good stewards of his money. And that's why we can be on TV, Facebook, and you. there and you know let God's money go that might not that might be why you're not being blessed because he says what is sin sin is when you know to do something that's right and you don't yeah. that's the Bible yeah. right yeah. so let's all do what's right because God knows God knows God knows we need him to move for our nation and every person under the sound of my voice you should be voting this is not one of those elections where I don't care. I, no, get out of that. Shake yourself loose from all that stuff. Amen. This is one year when the vote counts for everybody. Well, today, neighbor, I want to talk to you about the last time you received a miracle. The last time you received a miracle. My goodness, I've received so many miracles. You know, Pastor Thomas, I told you so many times. I had cancer two times. Once in my left breast and once in my brain. Yes, and the Lord, he healed me both times. I was born with chronic asthma. Because I was born at seven months. Well, you know, now they get they can be born at four or five months. And through the knowledge that the Lord has given to man, right. the baby can live. Can we just give my praise? <laughs> when is the last time you needed a miracle? I didn't say when you receive one, when was the last time that you needed a miracle? And you know, the world is in need of so many miracles. And I'm just so, I, I just feel like I need to say this again. I think I said this on off camera before you came on, that, you know, if a ministry is right, there will be healings and miracles. This is, the, this is the doctrine, the theology that Christ based his ministry on. Outside of being our Savior and our Deliverer, he was our healer. Mm -hmm. Jesus is God in the flesh. He came down in a way that we could all identify with him, and that was in a body of clay. And gave himself the name Jesus. <laughs> but he's God on the side. Gave me a miracle for my mind 
for comprehension. I had, I was in need of that miracle for many, many years. And just like any ailment that's not taken care of, just like undiagnosed diabetes, just like undiagnosed hypertension, it got worse. Yes. And I found myself trying to fake it until I made it. Trying to remember, trying to use my limited imagination to see how I can ask a peer or a coworker to repeat to me again what they said before without them really realizing she can't remember. That's probably one of the greatest miracles outside of salvation. You might say, hey, but you got healed of cancer, but if one of man don't work right. Yes. Amen. Hmm. Right? Amen. He's healed me of arthritis, pressure on my heart. But right up there with salvation is that one for my mind. Because if you ain't if you can't think for yourself, then you can't work for yourself. You can't provide for yourself. You, you know, this might seem so far-fetched, but look at all the young people who are out of their mind, mm -hmm. walking up and down the street. And if you have never encountered the mentally ill within your family, keep living, because they're in every one of our families. Mm -hmm. That weakness in the mind, the inability to deal with life, to deal with present-day situations. Always looking for something else to fix a problem. The song says, fix it, Jesus, fix it. Jesus is the only answer for whatever's ailing you today. It don't matter how you try to define it. It don't matter how you try to add it all up. It, it, one plus one gonna always equal two. I don't care if it's in a bracket or out. Because you know an algebra, come on somebody. Right. In algebra, they tell you, Tony, to do what's in the brackets first. That's right. But you gotta have something in the brackets to deal with. Mm. I got two brackets. Come on, don't. Come on, don't. <laughs> which is good. Mm -hmm. Right? Because every single one of us in here, and you neighbor, we all have people who look up to us. We, have, we all have influence over people's lives. And we don't do nothing but deteriorate their faith. Right? When we cry about every little problem that happens to us. 
It makes our God seem as if he can't provide. Come on, y'all. That's right. Can't provide for us. And a person who may, you may have influence in their life, they don't understand the principles of faith and might look at you as being a God to them. That's right, bro. Isn't that what the Bible teaches us? Yes. In the book of Exodus, it says that uh, Moses started complaining about he couldn't talk. Yes. Right? So the Lord said, I'm going to bring Aaron to you. Aaron's going to speak for you. You're going to be a God unto him. So there's your scripture. Mm -hmm. Some people have experienced so much uh, let down. So they just holding on to that person. And you have to do right by them. Amen. Right? Amen. The need for a miracle, again, is a requirement, is a necessary duty or an obligation. A need is a lack of something wanted or deemed necessary. You need your mind. You need to be able to use your hands and your legs and your feet. You need to be able to think soberly. Do you know how many people don't even have a common sense? Amen. They have one, two, three, four degrees. They don't have common sense. Don't you know you keep hanging around people who party and you're going you, you to develop an appetite to party. You keep on hanging around men that uh, commit adultery on their wife. You're going to slowly, you slowly develop an appetite for that which you see. Amen. We are products of our environment. Amen, Reverend. We are products of our environment. When we first had the um, the stay at home thing, where you couldn't uh, go out your house almost, and uh, jobs shut down. Man, how many of us were blessed because of technology that we could still work from home and maintain a pay, mm -hmm. a paycheck. That was Ourselves. Come on. We had to get ourselves used to our bedroom, had to turn to the office. And maybe you really had an office till the nephew came downstairs. And now that's his room. Or the grandbaby come over. Now that's half her room. And she don't want no computer stuff on her side of bed. True. But I'm saying all that to say we can get used to anything. Y'all all sitting up in here with a mask on. Ain't nobody said a word. Just content as can be. You don't want my Rona, I don't want your COVID. <laughs> <laughs> they sound like cousins. They too close for me. I don't want, I don't want them. I don't want them visiting me. <laughs> but I'm saying all that to say how we were able to what? Adjust and make the necessary accommodations that we can still provide for our family. Many years ago, it looked so strange to see people with a suit on and gym shoes. Now they're wearing gym shoes in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. yes. Preaching a message about going to play and have pleasure. You don't hear me. Come on, Reverend. Some of y'all, you, you ain't grown up enough for this message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't grown up. Talk about you and your second child. <laughs> you need a miracle. <laughs> People are looking for deliverance. And the time and the hour that we are living in, you've heard me say it so many times, neighbor, the perfect storm. A perfect storm to draw to God, a perfect storm to draw to that which is not right, which is not true. There's so many people scamming the people that's trying to get unemployment. Yeah. There's so many people who are fraudsters. They trying to connab people uh, on Social Security, and they, there's so many scams against those that's trying to get the stimulus. And you know who is trying to hold the stimulus over our head, talking about he ain't signing nothing to act the election. Right. So we got to get out and make sure there ain't no after election yeah. for some people. Come on, Reverend. Did you hear? I know you figured it out. It's these people that I'm dealing with. Here. I know you got it, right? Right. right? Holding over, they ain't going to increase the unemployment. Well, we'll talk about it next month. Right? So there's so many, much fear, depression, and oppression coming, just trying to live every day. 
But you got to think about, you need a miracle. And getting a miracle is so simple. You ain't got to write me a note. You couldn't pay for one miracle. You ain't got to meet me in the office. I ain't going to molest you. That's right. Amen. I, uh, Amen. Amen. That's right. Right? Right. That's right. I ain't going to sneak by your house when service is over. <laughs> right? Amen. Sometimes it gets so tight back here. I got to stretch. My husband kissed me the other day. He said, You got to start stretching. <laughs> But you got to stretch that faith. That's what I'm talking about today. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. All you got to do is ask, and it happens. Ask, and it happens. So let's break that word down, ask. So when you ask, you got to ask in faith. Not human faith. Human faith ain't enough for cancer. Human faith ain't enough when you start wondering, am I on the same road to Alzheimer's as my mom and my sisters? Yes, 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 that's right. Human faith is not enough when your teenage uh, son or daughter comes in from party and now everybody's sick in the house. I'm on my toilet. Because they ate symptomatic, but now your heart is beating out your chest because you got COVID. They might have a slight fever for two days, but you might be in ICU for 14 days. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Right? right? They, they, come on. Human faith ain't. Human faith can't do nothing on COVID. Did you hear me? Yes. Because ain't nobody. Saying that. <laughs> right? Yes, right. Human faith reaches part way to heaven, but divine faith reaches straight to the throne of grace. And I love this as we read this today. This is taken from my home church to uh, a little giant book called In the Search of a Miracle. You can download that. We're going to have that information right in the bottom of this lesson today if you would like to study it more in depth. But listen to that again. Human faith reaches only part way. And that reminds me of one of the uh, missionary trips that I took to South Africa. And this... Um, Young man, that means was hundreds and hundreds of people there on this trip. Um, and you could look out, you, could, you couldn't even see where the people ended at who came. <laughs> and they all stood there, even though it rained, they had their children with them. Not like us, it just looked like it's gonna fall up, we call in, all the kind of stuff we do, right? And so it, it was time for the the deaf and the dumb to get their miracle. So they're all lining up on stage. And so our pastor had an interpreter there uh, who was interpreting uh, you know, what was being said. So a young man came on the stage and the people in the congregation started getting riled up, started making noise, doing all kinds of stuff. So our pastor said, that the young man couldn't get a complete miracle, that means he either left without his hearing or his ability to talk because people's minds were not on God. And he had to keep on stopping to tell the people, you gotta be quiet. This is a, you know, this is a sensitive time for somebody to get a miracle. So the pastor referred to the young man um, saying that he didn't get his full he didn't get his full miracle because the people's minds were not on what God was doing. And that's why we're so adamant when it's time to have prayer that everybody stop talking and stop walking. Because Jesus, when he was here, anytime he performed a miracle, he made everybody sit down and do what? Look at him. Yeah. You have, I know, like myself, have watched so many churches on TV. The pastor is preaching his or her heart out. People laughing, talking, and God forbid if he or she is standing in front of a, uh, an acquaintance in the back. Right. They passing notes, cracking up, passing gum, Skittles, Eminem with peanuts, texting all on the phone. How 
could God be in a place like that when the minds are not on what he's doing? Amen. Yeah. Come on, man. So he says here, human faith only reaches halfway. And so how could a church not teaching truth have all the power in it that it needs for you to get healed? That's right. Right? Yes. How many times have we been out, out at different churches and we start sharing our testimonies and people look at us like, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. There's no cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. I didn't say I'm cured of cancer. I said I've been healed. Jesus has brought it down to us. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4 and 16, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. That's now. We need God so much now. The blood makes the help possible. It's just like people preach in so many churches today that nobody can live free from sin. Well, you'll never get a miracle from God. God does not use sinners to perform his great works. How can you get a miracle in a church that's preaching and saying that nobody can live free from sin? That blood, you get a miracle by that blood that was shed on the cross. So the blood can save me, but the blood can't keep you. The blood can heal me, but he can't keep me. He can't keep me out of, from getting cancer again. The blood of Jesus is good enough to forgive my sins, but it can't keep me from my holy. It can stop me from drinking on Friday, but next Friday I'm going to need him to, to not to work like that. That's right. There's something wrong with that doctrine. Yes. But so many people are taught, and this is the reason why so many people do not get that miracles. You get miracles through truth. Nobody can live free from sin. Oh, they just preach up, they preach up a storm. Man, but when you get down to sin, it's like a puppy. Right? Yes, right? All you got to do is think about this. Those holy miracles that I that the Lord gave me, they are still in my body, and it's my responsibility to take care of them. The Lord not gonna heal me for the go up for me to go out and live in a world of sin. The Bible teaches us so plainly in Mark the fifth chapter. This man had over two thousand devils in his soul. He says in the Gadareans, if I ain't mistaken, in Mark five, he said that when soon as Jesus got out of the ship and entered a certain place, the devil-possessed man came a running to him, trying to give him glory, which the devil can't give God no glory. He hates God and everything that has to do with God. He hates healing. He hates miracles. He hates believing. He hates the youth. He hates the strong. He hates the determined. He hates the pure and he hates the holy. declares in Mark 5. We talking about today? Do you need a miracle? When is the last time you need, when you need something? I'm not talking about, you can go in a grocery store, you can make a choice between white and, and wheat. When I was growing up, there wasn't no choice between white and wheat. It was how many can we get for the money we had. Yes. <laughs> talking about a pork chop, that was an appetizer to us. Man, when we got that, it was a, a, like a delicatessen. It was like, woo, what's going on? A uh, uh, pork chop? Right? Amen. But when you need a miracle, right? So here he is in Mark 5. It says here that Jesus began to talk to the spirit that, that took the man over. He couldn't even deal with the man yet. Jesus 
made those demons tell him who they, what he said, what's your name? They said, well, we are legion for we are many. And I heard a pastor preaching this past week that the demons drowned, but they did not drown. That's right. That's right. Come on, Jesus. The swine drowned, but the Amen. demons found them a new, another human home. Amen. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right? Yes. Hebrews 4 and 16 again says, Come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. So there is that man that was devil possessed. When Jesus had delivered him, he met him later on and said, Let me tell you one thing, bro. How do you stay free? Stay out of sin. The woman that was caught in adultery. Jesus delivered her, and but what did he tell her? Go away and sin no more. So it's like those math problems in the brackets that I told you about when we first started. How could, how could not living free from sin equal the prospect of being healed? It don't add up. The Bible says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Jesus met those people and told them that in order for you to keep to keep the miracle you have, you got to live right. Now you in need of a miracle, you got to go to miracle workers, the miracle way, the miracle path, the miracle direction if you want what he has for you. He got it, now you're going to do what he said to get it. That's breaking it down for you. Without the thou shalt, we will. Maybe he won the master of the king. That, that's it right there, what I just said. <laughs> the blood also makes possible for there to be no shadow in the valley of death. Jesus, through his blood, he took away all. He took the sting out of death, and I'm so glad about that today. Yes. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we're talking about. You needing a miracle. Jesus made it possible for us to come before the throne of grace, and he made it possible for us to ask and to receive healing. How do you search for a miracle? How do you search for a miracle? You search with all of your heart. Excuse me. You search with everything that's in you. You hunt for God. You search for God. Instead of doing other things, you talk to God. Instead of watching your favorite soap opera, you talk to God. Amen. Instead of being on the phone with your friends, you sacrifice that time. You sacrifice a meal. You get on your knees. You search for God with your whole heart. When you need something, isn't that what you do? Amen. I remember when we were growing up and my mother and father was raising five kids, sometimes six. And my mother would double up our coats if one coat was raggedy. Sometimes maybe they needed new boots and they went without because we needed something. Well, you need to be healed. What you going to give up?